Let's use this graph to describe the myogenic reflex, where we plot plasma flow as a function of blood pressure. Now, without the myogenic reflex, plasma flow would exponentially increase as a function of blood pressure, as shown here by the red line. Now, this type of blood flow is not ideal for a host of reasons. First, it could damage capillaries, and second, it would lead to uneven perfusion of the capillary beds. What is needed is a system where the plasma flow is maintained constant over a wide range of blood pressures, like we see here with the blue line. Now, the flat part of the blue line is referred to as the myogenic reflex because as the blood pressure begins to increase, arterioles apply an opposing resistance to maintain plasma flow constant. This ensures even perfusion of capillaries and avoids damaging capillaries. The myogenic reflex is very relevant to the kidneys because it would be near impossible to evenly perfuse the 1 million glomeruli per kidney. More importantly, without it, many glomeruli would be hyperperfused, which leads to damage to the glomerular capillaries, making them non-functional. This is one of the leading causes of kidney disease. So how does the myogenic reflex work in the glomerulus? Well, let's explain using this familiar illustration of the glomerulus and hydrostatic pressure profile across the afferent arterial, glomerular capillaries, and efferent arterial. Now watch what happens to the hydrostatic pressure along the glomerular capillaries as the blood pressure increases from 100 to 125 millimeters of mercury. Notice how it does not change across the glomerular capillaries. That's because the afferent arterial applied resistance in response to the increased blood pressure. So how does this happen? Well, it starts with increased blood pressure which causes the afferent arterial to stretch or become deformed. That stretching is sensed by the smooth muscle cells that surround the afferent arterial. To better explain the mechanism, let's zoom in at the level of the smooth muscle cell membrane. Here, we see the plasma membrane, extracellular and intracellular sides. Now, when blood pressure increases across the afferent arterial, it causes the membrane to stretch inward which opens stretch-activated ion channels like the green one you see here. This particular ion channel is a stretch-activated sodium channel, and once open, it allows sodium ions to enter the cell, which depolarizes the cell. This, in turn, opens voltage-gated calcium channels located on the sarcoplasmic reticulum, which allow calcium ions to enter the intracellular space and bind the actin chain to the myofilaments, as you see here. Now, the binding of calcium to the actin filaments cause the myofilaments to move. That contraction creates an opposing force to the increased blood pressure, which causes the membrane to return to its normal shape. It's that simple. 